Hey, what is up everyone? It's time for another Noita Biome Guide, and today we're going to be doing my favorite biome, the Jungle Biome. Underground Jungle. That's right, Uncle Jungle. Why do I love the Jungle Biome? Because it is chock full of resources. There are lots of heart containers. There are lots of wands. There's lots of potions. There's lots of everything here. You do need to go in with a decent amount of damage. I do recommend being able to do at least three to 400 damage per shot and hopefully you have a rapid fire shot here we're doing a good three four thousand damage per shot which is very effective in the jungle but you're going to need something powerful to get in here because the uh, the enemies do take a little bit more damage speaking of enemies why don't we uh go over the list of enemies that we will be running into here are some of the creatures that you can find in the jungle biome we have the Heesi Mine Lobbers, the Heesi Explosive Launchers, and the Heesi Poisoners, which are very dangerous. Their poison really does a lot of damage. Be cautious. We have two types of flowers that shoot things at you. We also have some wasps, which only do melee damage to you. Treat them like the bats and coal pits. We also have some spiders, uh, the Lukies, which only do melee damage to you. You don't see the legs here, but they come in three sizes. They're pretty vicious. You got to watch out for them. And then we have the mages. The Tele Mage, who you are familiar with. We have the Twitchy Mage, who can make you shoot your projectiles at random, and your projectiles now do damage to you. You kind of have to wait it out till it ends. And then we have the Heart Mage. If you're not familiar with the Heart Mage trick, you can ramp up your health really, really big with this guy, but you got to know the trick. If you don't know the trick, you can look it up, because I'm not going to tell you what it is. Yeah. So as far as perks, you're going to want invulnerability to fire and invulnerability to melee. There's a lot of fire on this level, I'll talk about that later, and there's a lot of melee on this level. You also can use any of the defensive ones are great, invisibility not so great. As always, repulsion field is amazing here and basically anywhere. There is an optional boss fight on this level which will put melee immunity at a premium as well as damage and the touch of spells are super handy for that. It's the dragon fight. Of course, good digging is always at a premium. You can get by with just soft digging. You're going to want teleportation if you can get it. You don't necessarily have to have it. And healing is always great if you have a little extra healing. We do have a healing bolt. Also a, a spark bolt would trigger. So we are able to heal ourselves if we have to a little bit. So that's always great. Maybe leave a couple extra hearts laying around in one of the underground mountains so that you can uh, one of the holy mountains so that you can go ahead and go back and grab the heart if you need to. The jungle does have, you can see that little red dot there, that is a mine. We're going to try to blow that up so you can see it. The mines are, if you touch them or if you kind of hit them, they will explode. They're not that bad. Their explosion radius is pretty tiny. The other big issue that you're going to have in jungle, well, actually there's, there's two. One is fire. If you can get fire immunity before getting here, you're going to be much better off. Fire immunity is huge in the underground jungle. And also melee immunity can be very big as well because of the wasps. The wasps, once you learn how to deal with them, aren't that big of a deal. But if this is like your second, third pass through the jungle, or your first attempt, they're going to frustrate you because you're not going to know how to dodge them. You're not going to know when to shoot them. They're basically, the, the long and short of it is get them early. Shoot them early if you can and have a high amount of damage that you can work with. As you can see here, the wand quality is much better. They're, the spells that are available on the wands are going to be much better. The actual wands themselves are going to be much better, which is going to allow you to build better wands as you go along we're lucky enough to have tinker with wands everywhere this was not done with spell labs this is an actual run that that uh i was doing so everything that you see here are things that i found on the main path now i did kind of jump ahead a little bit i did some digging i went to the other holy mountains and got the perks from the other holy mountains there wasn't much available in them to purchase so i did end up lucking out and finding a wand in i think it was fungal caverns that i found the big wand that I'm using here. And it's not that sensational of a wand, except for the fact that we are able to put some spells together to make it into a really, really big old damage wand. One of the biggest things in that is heavy shot. Heavy shot with spark bolt trigger and any of the triplicate or duplicate spells, that's where you're really gonna make make a lot. And the, uh, the mana too, we found a lot of add mana uh, spells throughout our journey. So that was super, super helpful. We didn't really find a regular Lumi Bolt, and we didn't find anything, uh, any speed up things, except for uh, we do have a couple of things that are in our little package that allow us to, to shoot very, very rapidly like this. You can see that kickback is nasty, though. That's from Heavy Shot, I think. All right, so you can see these guys are pretty ridiculous. There's a ton of gold here. That's the other thing about um, the jungle. If you don't have a lot of gold, 
but you get to the jungle with enough damage and enough health, don't worry about gold. You're going to end up with more gold than you know what to do with if you manage jungle properly. All right, these little flowers are a pain in the butt. They shoot some homing stuff at you that you got to be very careful of. The Lukis, the spiders, are not as scary as you would think that they should be. They just kind of soak up a lot of damage. Ooh, geez, I got to watch out there. That's a twitchy mage. So that twitchy mage, we've got to be very careful. Notice, see, I have twitchy up on the right-hand side where my perks are. Right now, I'm shooting at random. This is not me shooting. This is the, the game is shooting my wand. And if I happen to hit myself with my bolts, my own things, that's going to cause me a tremendous amount of damage. My own projectiles will now hurt me. So you got to wait for Twitchy to wear off before you continue on. That's one of the more dangerous mobs that you're going to get, the Twitchy Mage. The Telly Mages, I, I don't worry as much about. They can kind of teleport you into a bad situation, but I wouldn't panic too much about them. I do panic over the Twitchy ones and the Heart Mages. We do not encounter a Heart Mage in this run, um, so I was unable to go over and show you exactly what they do, but the Heart Mage, what they do is when they hit you, they will reduce your total health by half, by 50%. And then you have to wait for that to wear off. And then once it wears off, you go back to your normal health. They can actually, if they hit you multiple times, you can end up down to two health and you're basically vulnerable to being one shot. So you have to be very careful around the heart mages. Like I said, there is a heart mage trick that you can do with that. You can look that up. I don't want to give that away. Not too many spoilers here, just, just the basics here. I do get a little spoilerish with the dragon later on, and if you want to skip ahead to the dragon fight, you can go right ahead and do that. Uh, there is going to be a timestamp for that. All right, make sure you're blowing up everything that's ahead of you or behind you. Oh, there's one of those wasps. See how they just kind of fly right in and start batting into you? Without melee immunity, that is a ton of damage you're going to take. And all this fire here, everything kind of conspires against you to tick down your damage. It's a lot like the uh, snowy caverns because you're gonna end up just losing damage in little bits like see here how i'm up here trying to deal with these enemies while i was also on fire Ooh, now i'm choking to death asphyxiating on the wonderful uh fire fumes that are there the smoke all right one of the things that we do have in oh here's here's one of the worm cocoons let me see if we can maybe that one's already broken well, uh, those cocoons, if you hit them, a baby worm will drop out of them, and they're pretty easy to kill. If you have enough damage to destroy the larger hisi in here, you won't have to worry about the baby worms too much. This brown stuff catches on fire pretty easy and breaks a lot easier, digs out a lot easier than the other environmental stuff, the green stuff that's around there. So it's not as bad. This is a little bit of a pain to get through with what I have just because of my terrible recoil. I wish I had been able to find um, a recoil modifier somewhere, but uh, and rather than switch back and forth with the wands and make a digging wand, then go back to the fast wand, then make a digging wand, then go back. I didn't have enough mana to do that, so I just toughed it out with this. All right, so more of these wasps. They're they're literally everywhere. Blow them out, and I want to find a particular formation to show you. I'm going to actually move forward a little bit to that point so I can show you the other formation that's in here that's relatively important. One formation I won't be showing you is the Luki Lair, which is all the way over to the left-hand side on the left wall. You do not want to go there. There are some bad Lukis in there that you can't kill, like giant purple Lukis that take no damage unless you have some very special wands and so on. That would be... So if you go all the way over to left-hand where you hit, hit the EDR, and you kind of go straight down about halfway down and a little closer to the bottom is that Luki layer. You'll be able to tell if you get there by the complete change in color. It's going to turn into like a purple wasteland sort of color. And you'll see those big giant suckers just waiting for you. They are extremely dangerous. All right. So we are looking for a particular structure in here that is peculiar to the jungle. Uh, there's a nice little heart there. There are tons of hearts in this area. It's peculiar to the jungle in that uh, we don't see this in any other biome, really, that there is like a biome within a biome. This is like a sub biome. This is a, a fungal cavern right in the middle of your underground jungle. Now, unlike the fungal caverns in coal pits, this one is more like 
the fungal caverns that you can find, the very large fungal caverns that you can find near the giant temple area out in the desert that people call Wand Mart. This is the same idea. There are lots of wands here and there are lots of potions here. You do have to be careful about where you're shooting. As you can see, we already broke a potion over there on our right hand side. A lot of it is going to be housed in these little metal containers. So you do need some digging to get in. Typically, if I'm on the hunt for ambrosia or an overpowered wand, this is where I go. The enemies in here tend to be the same type of enemies that you would find in any fungal caverns, but they're just a little bit stronger than the ones that you encountered in coal pits. So do be aware that you do need your extra damage down here. But if you can survive the jungle, you can certainly survive this area relatively easy. When I'm on the hunt for ambrosia or on the hunt for wands, I tend to think of jungle first because that's where I can kind of find a lot of that stuff. And then I think of this fungal caverns inside the jungle next. Then if I can't find anything here, that's when I'll usually branch out and start going into the wider world and looking for some of the biomes that you don't find on your regular run. If I'm missing something absolutely crucial right now, I'm not missing anything super crucial. So I'm just kind of looking around for anything that looks amazing. This does have a higher population of those mages, so you do want to be aware of that. And you'll see it's a very small area. It's a lot smaller than you would expect. But in that small area, there's a ton of stuff. As far as risk versus reward, I give this place like an A++++. It's not quite S tier, but it's right about there. If you need some extra wands or some potions like teleportation or if you're looking for especially like Ambrosia, if you're having a particularly difficult time, if you got to deal with Scowd later on, this is the place that you want to look and you want to kind of comb through all of it. I would recommend definitely paying this place a visit, even if you don't necessarily need anything. Look, I can get Black Hole. Perfect. I need that for the dragon. So unless you 100% know you've got the run one and that's all you want to do is just win the run, I, I always try to stop by this place and do a little bit of shopping. The other place that I do want to show you is the Dragon Cave. So we're going to move on over to there now. If you travel on over all the way to the right hand side, you'll find a cave that's blocked by a boulder. You're going to have to dig through that boulder to get in. You will find the Dragon Cave containing a giant dragon egg. For the dragon, you're going to also want to have specific types of digging like black hole or something that can dig relatively quickly and can dig in a straight line so that you can actually crack into the dragon egg. You release the dragon by digging to the center of that egg and moving towards the center of it with your character, and then the dragon will appear. As far as bosses go, this is probably one of the easiest bosses to defeat. If you go and you look at the wiki, you can find out that this boss has no particular resistances to any sort of damage, and it does have weaknesses to certain damage. One surefire way to kill it is an obvious way that we all know of any of the touch of spells. So if you have spark bolt with trigger, or any long distance spell with trigger that you can stick a touch of spell on at the end of, you've got a guaranteed kill of this guy. It's a, it's a one shot. The dragon also has a weakness to slice damage. So make of that what you will. And of course, if you have ambrosia that will protect you from any of the damage, or if you have melee immunity, the majority of the dragon's attacks are not going to do much to you. If you have melee immunity and repulsion field, you're essentially invulnerable to the dragon and can take your time killing it. How much damage do you need? You need to be doing about, I'd say, 2,000 a second or so to make this fight manageable. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig him out first and set up my touch of spell with my timer so that we can go ahead and just basically do the one shot. You can see uh, we do have all of the stuff that we need here. We have our touch of, we have our spark bolt with trigger. It's as simple as that. The only thing we need from here is we'll need a way to dig into here, which those black holes will work very well for. You can also freeze kick the dragon like you do with a zero orb colmy. So that would involve freezing the dragon in place and placing a kick to the center of its body. Usually uh, the head I find is a little tougher to hit. I just kind of jump into the middle of it and kick when it's frozen, because when it's frozen, it's not doing any damage to you. One thing you want to note about the damage is it's the head that does the huge melee damage to you. So if you can avoid the head, you're actually pretty good in this fight. The dragon also shoots some fireballs and some slow moving orbs that I think both of them are relatively slow moving, relatively easy to get out of the way of. So if you have teleport and you're good at moving away with teleport, you can also do this fight pretty easy. The dragon moves quick 
and it moves um, basically in the worm style pattern, but faster and it turns quicker. It also tends to go off your your screen real fast. So you got to be careful about tracking it and knowing where it's going to come through because it does come through quick. All right, here he is. Switch to my touch of. You can see those little orbs there. Boom, touch of and he is dead. Easy. It's nice, super clean. He drops a max upgrade heart and he also drops the uh, usually a pretty decent one. This one is kind of bleh and an orbit spell. So you get a uh, projectile orbit spell. So pretty good rewards. If you've got the setup to kill him, I would always recommend going ahead and at least doing it to check it out, at least for the health, if for nothing else than the health. And you'll usually get a halfway decent wand. We didn't. Then again, we don't really need it. So in summary, the jungle is a treasure trove of wands, hearts, and sometimes even potions. Always want to make sure you visit the middle section, which is going to be that fungal cavern that will have a lot higher density of rewards in it. Avoid the left-hand side. That's where the Luki layer is with the undamageable Luki. So you're going to want to make sure that if you have to dig around this biome, dig down the right-hand side, not the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we do have the wonderful giant dragon egg that if you dig into it and step into it, you will trigger the dragon fight. Dragon is one of the easiest bosses to kill. Again, you can look up on the wiki or look up a video how to kill the dragon boss. One of the best ways to get yourself a free wand, an orbit projectile spell, and a little bit of extra health. Okay, hope you like this video. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section about anything I missed. Like and subscribe. And don't forget, YouTube, you're up.